The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now, as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples, a, a sizable crowd followed him. And Bartimaeus, a, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. Now, on hearing that, that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he began to cry out, Oh, Jesus! The son of David, have pity on me. And many now began to rebuke him, telling him to be silent. But he, he kept out calling all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to Jesus, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Jesus definitely has an agenda here. He is on a mission. It is a mission from God. And what he wants to do is to go into the marketplace, go into the world and proclaim what he sees and what he knows. What does he know? He knows his deepest and truest identity. He knows that he is the Son of God. And he knows that his Abba loves without condition. And as good a definition of salvation as any is, is to know in the depth of your heart, in the depth of your soul, that you are loved without any condition, and therefore the depth of your being is love. He knows this. And, and because he knows this, he has a vision of the way the world can be, should be. He's got a name for this vision. He calls it the kingdom of God. So he goes about proclaiming everywhere he can what he knows and what he sees. And Jesus has the ability to see all the way into the depth of the soul because obviously he has already seen into the depths of his own soul and he knows what is there. And, and, and what is there is basically almost always hidden. Hidden to we mortals. Well, at least we think we are. At least on the outside we are, because on the inside there is something that is immortal. We go around all of life drinking water, not knowing that underneath it is this incredible wine cellar with the most delicious and beautiful wines. We, we go around scraping our pennies together, never knowing that in the deepest part of our being, hidden from our sight, is a, a treasure. A, a, a chest filled with gold. Uh, everything we could possibly want. The fullness of joy and the fullness of life and the fullness of love. It's in there, but, but we can't see it. We are, we are unable to see it unless there is a guide to show us how to get there. That's his job. And so the job of Jesus is to reveal to us what's, what's already there. We don't have to go out hunting in the skies. All we need to do is go deep inside the human heart and we we will begin to find it. So that's his job. That's his mission. But today he begins by opening the eyes of the blind man. Bartimaeus is by the side of the road. Jesus is passing by. He cannot see. And one of the things that Jesus is constantly trying to do as he proclaims his vision is to get us to see, to get us to get it. In Mark's gospel, continually, they miss it right before their eyes, but they still miss it. So he keeps on trying by more examples in different ways, and they keep on missing it. But today he's going to do one more thing. He's going to open the eyes of a blind man. And, of course, he does that several times in the gospel, the man born blind, the, the fellow who, first of all, thinks he's seeing sticks, and then his eyes are open. And then today, Bartimaeus, who understands that Jesus is going by, and he's shouting out, Oh, Jesus, son of David! He's calling him by his title, son of David. Who is David? David's the shepherd who took care of his people. Have pity upon me, Kyrie eleison. Have mercy on my soul. 
And the more they tried to shut him up, the more he keeps on shouting. Why? There's a hunger in him. And the hunger in him is to see. Is to see. And so Jesus calls him over and he comes up to Jesus and Jesus says, what do you want? He said, I, I want to see. And Jesus says, because of your faith, because of your daring to ask, you shall see his eyes are open. And now he is following Jesus. He's on the road with Jesus to see what Jesus is going to do, where he's going to go, what he's going to teach, because he's not done seeing. There's something more to see. There's a deeper sight to have. It is an insight, not an outer sight. You know, right from the time of the Enlightenment, there's been this incredible war going on between, between science and religion. And then science is able to see so much, but faith sees something else. And, and, and if we go back to one of our own fathers, our theological fathers, Bonaventure, we realize that we don't have to have that war. You know, Bonaventure taught that we have three eyes. He says the, there's the eye of the flesh, you know, physical seeing. He has the eye of the mind, our ability to, to think. And he says then there's the oculus uh, contemplationis, uh, the, the, the eye of contemplation, which means the eye that is able to see all the way through to the depth of the greatest and deepest realities. For our purposes, we'll just call it the eye, the eye of the soul, the eye of the flesh, the eye of the mind, the eye of the soul. Now, in, in the eye of the flesh, we've done <laughs> incredible things, just incredible things. Uh, this is a, a sign of it. Yeah. And before I had my, my cataract surgery, I actually needed them to see. Now the top is clear glass, but I still need them to read. And you know how I read. Yeah. But, 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 but the eye, what, what, what humankind has done with, with the, 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 the things of seeing is, is utterly remarkable because now we can see, oh, through telescopes, uh, galaxies dancing around each other. Through microscopes, we see things that the human eye has never, ever been able to see before. So we are, we are light years ahead of our ancestors when it comes to, to the eye of the flesh. The eye of the flesh is doing just incredible, remarkable things. He says then that there's also the eye of the mind. The eye of the mind is the, is the ability to see and understand abstractions, things that are strictly in the mind. And, 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 and the way that we, we train the eye of the mind is to go to school and, and to learn. So, so we go to school and we learn mathematical principles and we learn equations and we, we learn uh, sociological teachings and, 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 and psychological truths. And we learn all kinds. The eye of the mind is an incredible thing. Now, now, the eye of the mind includes the eye of the flesh. The eye of the flesh knows nothing about the eye of the mind. But the eye of the mind understands the eye of the flesh. Matter of fact, it needs the eye of the flesh. Here's, a, here's an example of how the eye of the mind works. This is this goofy little camera. Can you believe that this takes colored pictures? I can remember back in the, in the, in the early 50s when the big telev first colored television cameras were out. They were huge. This itty-bitty little thing. Now, this is the eye of the flesh. It sees physical distinct reality. But it was the eye of the mind that created it. And, and, and we ain't seen nothing yet with the eye of the mind. Just wait till artificial intelligence goes full steam. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change the face of humanity. It's going to change the face of the world. It, it, matter of fact, in some ways, very scary. Because they say that the algorithms now will be able to tell us more about ourselves than we know about ourselves by watching what we see, what we're doing, uh, by, knowing, by knowing what our blood pressure is, what our heart rates are, what excites us, what doesn't, it's going to know more about us than we know about ourselves. That's kind of scary. But what the eye of the mind can't see is what the eye of the soul sees. You see, and the eye of the soul includes the eye of the flesh and the eye of the mind, but it goes much deeper. The eye of the soul is able to deal with transcendental realities, to see all the way into the heart of the matter. The, the eye of the soul puts everything together and sees 
what really is happening. And it is an intuitive insight. It, it is one that is it's hidden, and so you usually need a guide to show us how to get to it. And, 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 and the guide is one who has already been there and seen it. And so the guide is to show us how to see. That's it. Jesus is this the perfect guide because he knows. You, you see, in, in every one of these, both the eye of the flesh and the eye of the mind and the eye of the soul, every one of them is experiential. You, 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 the, the child, when the fir child first opens its eyes, when the baby opens its eyes, everything's out of focus. You can't distinguish one thing from another. It's kind of oceanic. Then pretty soon, as the eyes begin to focus, the physical eyes begin to focus, he sees discrete entities. This is mommy. This is daddy. This is, of course, the eye of the mind is teaching them, but, but just this physical thing that he's separate from other realities, that's the eye of his flesh experiencing that. And then the eye of the, of the mind, the first time a, 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 an 11th grader walks into his or her algebra class, and, and she's got all these little symbols in her head, and she starts putting these symbols together, and she comes up with an answer. Well, she's just had an incredible, incredible experience of what her mind can do. But the eye of the soul goes into the deepest, most profound experiences of all. What is the deepest part of all? What is our deepest identity? Who are we? You know, the, the St. Paul had the eye of his soul open when he falls, and this light blinds him, blinded by the light, but all of a sudden he comes to understand there's a whole reality that he never saw before. He was living in the eye of his mind and all the laws and the rules, and that wasn't it. Of course, Jesus, of course, had an experience like none other. At his baptisms, the heavens opened up, and he hears, you're my son. You want to know your deepest, deepest truest identity is? You're my son. Not only are you my son, you are my beloved son. At the transfiguration, you are my beloved son. This is the son of God. Now he knows who he is, and his whole raison d'etre is to open up the eye of the soul so that we can see what really counts. And of course, what does he see? What is his vision of the kingdom? Where it all fits together in perfect harmony. What is his greatest prayer? His greatest prayer is to bring forth what he sees. What does he see? He sees the Father and Son as one. And so his great prayer is that we all become one. As you, Father, are with me and I am with you. Our, our great tragedy of the modern world today is that we are caught in our mind. We are caught in our mindset. And if we are so caught in our mindset, we're going to have a hard time getting into the mind of Christ or to see what the Christ sees. Uh, and what does he see? He, he sees that uh, there, there are no real sinners. Or oh, there are errant children who go in, in different directions. But in the base of each and every one of them, there is that same well of love because they are commit, created in the image and likeness of the divine. And so our, our holy work, his holy work, is to, is to get us to see through the eyes of the soul. Yeah, and I, and I, I dare to say we're not doing a real good job of that right now. When it, when it comes to the eye of the flesh, like I've said, we are light years ahead of the generations before us. When it comes to the eye of the mind, good God, what we're, what we're going to be experiencing in the next 30, 50 years is, is beyond our imagination. But I, but I dare to say, in the eye of the soul, I, I got a hunch our great-grandmothers were more soulful than we are. And that they saw much easierly, maybe because they weren't clouded by so much of the other, what really was going on. And so our, our holy work is to, is to follow the leader. Yeah. Bartimaeus called him rabbi, master, to follow the master. The, the spiritual masters who have gone before us, we're celebrating our 
Founders Day coming up in a little while. What, what did they see? What did Mother Clara see that, that we need to see? And what, what propelled her to do the things that she, that she did? Yeah. And so we, we need to follow that, that path. And, and where does the path lead us? Into, into union, into mercy, into forgiveness, into life. Right now, living so much in the eye of the mind, and what's so sad is that the eye of the mind has been corrupted in such a way that, that we have, that we, that because of the algorithms, because of the, the, the internet, we can go down whatever black hole we want to and see whatever reality we think we can want to hold on to. I heard a story recently about two sisters, blood sisters in their 70s, who for the last five years have not spoken to each other because of their mindset. They are so caught in their individual mindset that the other one is either all wrong or wish they weren't even there. And one is uh, very, very to the right, the other is very, very to the left. And one believes in the vaccinations, the other one doesn't. Never the twain shall meet. And for those of you who are at home, you're going to get a chance to do something about it because this Thanksgiving, you're going to have Thanksgiving dinner with your crazy Uncle Chester. And he's going to drive you right up the wall. It is that moment, at that moment, that you are to see Chester through the eyes of the soul, to the beauty that dwells therein to transcend. The eye of the soul transcends all this stuff. It takes in the flesh, it takes in the mind, but it sees. For the eye of the soul calls us to see reality as it truly, honestly, ultimately is. And how is it? Incredible. Beautiful. Filled with love. Because at the core of all reality, at the core of all being, is what Jesus saw and Jesus knew. And what did Jesus know? He's love incarnate. He knew it.